my name is William Mulligan and I'm the head of the School of History. And my name is Jennifer Wellington and I'm a lecturer in modern history. It's, it's a real pleasure to be head of the School of History and, and to have this opportunity to welcome you to our open day uh, today. Uh, the School of History here at UCD is the, the largest uh, in the country uh, and it's ranked in the top 100 in the world uh, with internationally uh, renowned faculty. Uh, and one of the advantages of this is that it enables us to cover a tremendous chronological breadth. Uh, so we can bring you from early medieval Ireland's place on the edge of the Roman Empire uh, right up uh, to the uh, end of the Cold War. Uh, history is about uh, human experience. It's about all of human experience. It incorporates how humans have imagined, lived and uh, built uh, their various worlds, uh, be it uh, life in Viking Dublin uh, over a thousand years ago or in dictatorships in Europe's uh, 20th century. Uh, so if you're interested in uh, humans, in how we've related to each other, in how we've related to our various environments, uh, then history is surely the subject for you. Jen, what are your thoughts? The great thing about history is it's capacious. It contains so many other things. History is the mother discipline. It links language, literature, culture, art, politics, economics, law, international relations, statistics. Um, it can also branch into science, medicine, and so on. I mean, think about it. Everything has a story, has origins, has a how did what we see now come to be. History is also relevant in the here and now. What we believe about the past is mobilized in support of the politics of the present. I mean, you, you think about political groups, think about the claims they make about the, about the past when they're trying to describe what they think we should be doing in the here and now. And of course, as William has said, it enriches our understanding of human life, beliefs, and relationships. And most of all, if you learn history, you, you learn to be a critical and informed citizen. Uh, and it also makes you really good fun at dinner parties, I swear, full of fun facts and weird stories about dead people. Yeah, what, what kind of critical skills do you learn? You, um, it's like the Swiss Army knife of employment, really, okay? So it trains skills applicable for many professions. It gives you the ability to think not just outside the box, but in a way about the box itself, right? Like, why is this the question that we're asking? You know, sure, this is the way we assume things are done, but has that always been the case? Um, you, even like, who built this box, right? And you learn to collect, to analyze, and to synthesize quantitative and qualitative data. You learn to independently pursue projects from conceptualization to research to presenting. Um, history trains you in verbal, written, and oral communication. Um, and importantly, I think this one's really important, history trains you to see other people's point of view. You know, why did people in the past behave the way they did? You know, they're animated by how they perceived the world, how they emotionally reacted to structures of belief, how they lived within family structures, you know, how they experienced their environments and societies. So history teaches you to always look at that context in time and place and evaluate matters based on evidence um, and that time and place is culture, societies and values. Um, but, you know, if you don't believe me, um, we have some graduates uh, of UCD History who will tell you a little bit now about their experiences. My name is Neve O'Keefe. Um, I graduated from uh, History and English at University College Dublin in 2008. Um, and in terms of how history has helped me or the study of history has helped me in my career since, it's been totally invaluable. Um, my career has charted uh, policy, public affairs, corporate communications, um, and I'm now uh, working in IBEC, which is a business representative body in Ireland. But I think having the, the fundamental skills around research, about being able to work collaboratively, um, and also, I guess, being able to critically analyze information has been totally invaluable. And I think those are the really uh, core skills that you get uh, if you do a degree in history. Hi from London. My name is Kira Lynch and I'm Chief Operating Officer at the Breeding Club, a UK education charity that supports students from underrepresented backgrounds to get into and succeed at university. I graduated during the last recession in 2009. My history degree at UCD taught me critical thinking skills and how to analyze different sides of an argument which helped me to problem solve and to think on my feet. 
These skills have helped me progress in my career and be transferable from an initial career in finance to now working at an education charity. Hi, my name is Evan O'Quigley and I'm the Corporate Communications Manager for Mercury, a large multinational engineering company headquartered and founded in Dublin, Ireland. I studied history at UCD as part of a dual major in my bachelor's degree and then followed that up with a master's in history. Studying history at UCD gave me the key skills that I use every day for work, such as writing, formulating an argument, researching, understanding and trying to communicate often very difficult concepts. Hi, my name is Laura Addy and I graduated from UCD in 2018 with a degree in history. And for the last couple of years, I've been working as a researcher in live television, uh, working on various series between RT and Virgin Media Television, uh, which was incredibly fun and fast paced, but certainly challenging. And I don't think a day went by in my job as a researcher where I wasn't really dependent on the, the skills I picked up throughout my history degree. Um, I think those research skills really stand to you. Study history for the passion you have for it. Uh, don't worry about the career possibilities at the end of the tunnel because there will be plenty of career opportunities and your degree in history will open up so many doors for you. I'm Shane. Uh, I graduated in uh, 2019. Um, I currently work in the Department of Health um, and I think my history degree has um, helped me in a few ways, um, mostly around kind of critical analysis um, being able to look at a lot of information and picking out uh, what's important because I think as the young people today uh, we're exposed to a lot more information per day than basically any generation before us um, and I think with a history degree you really get a nose for sniffing out what's important, who's trying to, you know, sell you lies, who's trying to sell you truth. And you also get to travel the world with us uh, across uh, time and space. Uh, so you can start off in uh, the old Irish Parliament, uh, down on College Green in the 18th century. Uh, we'll take you uh, across the uh, prairies of North America or the steppes of Central Russia. Uh, through to the uh, bustling port city of Shanghai in the 19th century. Uh, and then uh, you can revisit uh, Berlin in its tumultuous years uh, in the uh, 1920s. So you, so you get to uh, travel uh, broadly uh, with us as well as a long chronological span. Uh, and not alone that, but I'd also say that we can uh, introduce you to wide ways of thinking about history, from the persistent importance of political history uh, so you'll get to eavesdrop on political leaders as they make critical decisions about war and peace and at high-minded debates about major principles that organize social and community life. And we'll also introduce you to new ways of studying history, uh, to the history of medicine, uh, history of the environment, uh, and the history of uh, popular culture. And as a way to kind of introduce you to how we approach history at UCD, uh, we've begun to put together a series of podcasts that are aimed at uh, school students. And in the first podcast, Professor Dermot Ferreter uh, discusses uh, the Anglo-Irish uh, Treaty. And it's available on SoundCloud, and it will be available on History Hub. And I'll just give you a brief preview here. Today we're joined by Professor Dermot Ferreter, who is a Professor of Modern History here at University College Dublin and he's going to be speaking to us about the treaty and how it came about and what its repercussions were. So, Dermot, just to start, how did the negotiations begin or why did the Irish come to the negotiating table? I think there was a recognition in both Britain and Ireland by the second half of 1921 that it wouldn't be possible either for the IRA or the British Crown Forces to inflict a decisive military defeat. Um, so there was a degree of stalemate. Um, I think one of the reasons why politics becomes more important is because there is that recognition that this war is becoming increasingly costly. costly. Uh, Britain is suffering serious reputational damage um, because of the bad news that's coming out of Ireland. Um, the senior British politicians and military masters had maintained that they were containing their Irish problem, that they were on top of it, uh, that they were defeating the IRA, who they dismissed as a small murder gang. But clearly many of the dramatic happenings in 1920 and 1921 and the very high profile controversies and killings and reprisals and counter reprisals gave lie to that assertion that they were on top of the Irish War of Independence. 
Okay, so that's uh, available on uh, History Hub. And uh, Jen, uh, can you tell us how you study history uh, at UCD? What are the different ways you can study history here? Oh, well, um, okay, there are a lot of ways you can study history. Now, I'm going to start with the, you know, how you do it. So, you know, you study history through a combination of attending your lectures, participating in seminars. So all your lectures are divided into smaller seminar groups. Uh, and it's there that you go and discuss what you've learned in your lectures and, and in your readings with a smaller group. Um, obviously, then there are weekly, re weekly readings. You, you'll read a lot and um, it's heaven for bookworms. You'll also learn through completing assessment, learning to write university essays, um, document analyses, where you analyze historical documents and other sources, um, give presentations and write exams. Once you get a bit further into your degree, you'll also write longer research essays and dissertations, um, where you get to develop your own topic and research it in depth. And if you choose to do so, you'll also learn through opportunities to study abroad or complete internships. Now, what specific um, degree programs can you do these things in at UCD? Okay, so you can do the um, BA Humanities, um, which is um, the CAO code is DN 530. It's a four year program, um, multiple subjects to provide coherence and depth to learning within care um, carefully structured pathways. You can do history by itself or as part of an interdisciplinary pathway. And in your third year, you can study abroad for a semester or for the full year on a student exchange, choosing from a huge array of European universities in what we call the Erasmus program, or in many other places around the world, like including, for example, in Australia, Japan, and Chile. And in that third year, you can also opt to take an internship here. So some examples of internship partners are in the cultural and heritage sector, like the Little Museum of Dublin, in media, like for example, in Communicore, that's the company who own, for example, News Talk, Today FM and Spin, um, the Irish Examiner and the Journal.ie, and in the government and public sector, for example, at the Central Bank or the NUI. Um, other options include in advocacy, like the Simon community, and in, in marketing um, and innovation, like in Flipdish and Food Cloud. Okay. So that's some of the ways the whole, the broad um, four year uh, BA humanities is structured. Now, what are the structured degree pathways in that BA Humanities? Well, we have history um, is one, um, obviously the best possible use of your time. Um, in this pathway, uh, you will take a deep dive into history with intensive training on archives and research methods. So it's all history all the time. Or you can take the history and politics pathway. And in this program, you'll investigate the workings of government and society in contemporary and historical perspectives. So, you know, some of you would have heard Jack LaHart already this morning, and Jack did history and politics. Um, classics, English and history is another pathway. And in this one, we have a stronger focus on antiquity and develop a deep understanding of the human experience, society, history and culture from the earliest times to the present day. Now, in, um, in 2021, we have two new programs. And the first one is European Studies. And in European studies, you will explore Europe through history, literature and culture, whilst, and this bit is key, improving your language skills. So you will acquire or develop your proficiency in at least one modern European language. And, and the second new pathway for 2021 is global studies. It's another exciting new program. And in this pathway, you will examine the major issues, um, major global issues, including migration, imperialism, capitalism and the environment. And you do all this through history, film, drama, culture, and language. Okay, so that's your four year BA Humanities. Or you can take the BA Joint Honours, which is um, DN 520, and that's three years. Now, this is our long established three year BA degree where you take joint honours in two subjects, right? So some of the popular combinations are history and English, history and Irish, history and German, history and classics, or history and drama or film. Okay, so there's some examples. Now, um, the last way you might be able to study history as a subject in UCD is it through the BSc Social Sciences. And that's a four year program. And it's what you might take if you wanted to, for example, take the combination of economics and history. And now onto what you might do though, when you arrive, because I know that's a lot of information. So William will describe for you now, um, you know, what do you do in your first year? Uh, well, in your first year, we'll introduce you to a veritable smorgasbord of courses. Uh, in Irish history, we take you from uh, the Reformation uh, to the Act of Union. 
and then in a second course from the Act of Union to the Celtic Tiger. In European history, we offer a medieval survey that takes you from the fall of the Roman Empire to the Renaissance, and then a modern history course that takes you from the Reformation, which divided Europe in one way, uh, to the Cold War, which divided Europe in a different way. And we introduce you, as I said earlier, to other parts of the world. So we have a survey of modern American history uh, from independence in the 1770s to the Second World War, and also a new module or new course, I should say, on a global history entitled Radicals and Revolutionaries, looking at how they reshaped uh, the world uh, that we live in. Uh, and this uh, offer is really to introduce you to what we can uh, teach and to give you then the opportunity to uh, deepen your own interests with more detailed courses in second and in third year, particularly when you do research courses in your final years. Uh, so as your uh, degree progresses, you'll be able to uh, hone your own interests. Uh, and don't be surprised if, like me, uh, what you're interested in at the very beginning of your degree turns out to be completely transformed uh, by the time uh, you have uh, completed the degree. Uh, and we have uh, recordings of some current students as well uh, that can tell you uh, how they've uh, experienced uh, history uh, here at UCD. Hey guys, my name is Sophie O'Leary and I'm in second year studying history and politics. So with history in UCD, you are delving into all kinds of history like European history, Chinese history, Irish history, of course. And there are so many different kinds you can learn. And if you really love history and you love reading, you'll definitely love it here in UCD as well. And I just think it's one of the most interesting subjects you could even study here because it's just a lot of fun to learn and you'll be learning so much. And yeah, I would definitely recommend studying here because you will have the best support and the best professors and the best teachers teaching you, of course. So yeah, study history here at UCD, guys. It's the best. Hi there. My name is James Ryan, and I'm a student in the School of History in UCD. The range of history modules on offer is fantastic, and I particularly like the modules in modern Irish history. This year, the school have done a brilliant job in making seminars and lectures work, despite all the disruption with COVID, whilst also really helping students put their best foot forward in these tricky times. It's just a great place to study. Hi, I'm Rory, and I'm a final year student of history at UCD. I find my time with the School of History at UCD to be engaging and challenging. A module that stands out to me was the first year module, Creating History. In this module, we did more than just listen to lectures and read history books. We engaged with the material, debating amongst ourselves about the different merits of arguments and opinions. It was different, it was new, and it was very rewarding. Okay, so I think we have a very short time for some quick questions, if that's okay. This is a great one from Darren. Is this historian a sleuth or an interpreter? Ah, um, well, one of my favorite lectures uh, and one of my favorite pastimes is to read detective novels. And uh, Colin Kidd, a, a, a well-known uh, British historian, argued that the root of history lies in uh, 19th century detective novels. So, um, so there is a degree of sleuthing around it, discovering, uh, interpreting evidence. Uh, and, and, and so I think it's uh, a, a bit of both. But um, my, my personal obsession with crime fiction uh, leads me to the sleuth. Uh, yeah, it's great. You interpret evidence and you're also kind of trying to piece together different bits of history. Um, and then this is for Jennifer from Adam. It says, out of curiosity, what is your go-to story about dead people for parties? Well, you know, I think um, being a good guest at any dinner party involves reading the room. So, you know, you, you want to tell a story that's of interest um, to, to the people who happen to be in that room. Um, I don't know much about what you're interested in. So what I might do is uh, uh, fall back on an old family story. I had um, one of my ancestors ended up in Australia because he was a French prisoner of war. He was a, a French guy fighting in the Revolutionary Wars in the 1790s and he was captured by the English and then he was in jail in England and some people came around. Um, some white park had had the brilliant idea that they could start making wine in New South Wales. Um, they might make some money that way and they came around the jail and basically went to all these French prisoners and said, you know, can any of you froggy bastards make wine? 
And him and his cousin went, oh, oui, oui. Uh, extraordinary. <laughs> and um, they got shipped out to Australia and they had convicts who planted the grapes. Um, and it was all ready for them to like then harvest and, and make wine, right? Because they told the English they were winemakers. The only problem is um, that uh, my ancestor Antoine and his cousin Francois were lying. They were in fact full of it. Um, and so they bullshitted their way to Australia and then they're there and the English don't know what to do with them. <laughs> So they let them stay and um, <laughs> my um, many greats grandfather ended up running a pub and making peach cider and then his cousin got involved in the Castle Hill Rebellion in 1804 and got deported back to England and jail. Oh, so he ended up back where he started. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how winemaking in Australia began. Yeah. yeah. And we might just finish with this uh, great question from Shane and I'll give it to both of you to kind of wrap up as well. Uh, why is UC the best place to study history? Yeah, my answer is, is the, the breadth uh, that we offer that enables, uh, introduces students to a wide range of courses uh, and then enables them to hone their own interests uh, as they go on. Uh, and in particular, I'd say that the research led modules uh, in third and fourth year are extremely impressive. That's where you get to the cutting edge of what it means to be an historian. And I, I would say that, um, you know, UCD is the, it's the biggest uh, department um, on the island. And so there's just a lot of different people and a big range of stuff that you can do. And so you're, you're really going to find somewhere your niche and, and the stuff that really fascinates you. And I, I think that's a, a really great reason to go to UCD. Um, also, I think our, my, our colleagues are great and great fun and they'll be nice to you. So. <laughs> Yeah, yes. And I, I was a student here once and I loved it so much I ended up staying. So, um, <laughs> I know the feeling, William. I also studied history and I could definitely concur that there's a huge, huge breadth of options from Irish to international, huge range of different um, things that you can do here.